Okay guys and gals, for this video we're going to uniform the neck tension of our cases. Now, um, in, for this video I'm going to show you how to get this resized die set up just right so that that's all we're doing because if you have this resized die incorrectly set up this case that's set to a correct SAMI dimension it won't chamber in your rifle you don't want to have a bunch of rounds with that problem so that brings us to this question why are we doing this a lot of reloaders they simply go straight from here to here they take off reloading but why am I going to add this step into this process where I'm going to run the expander through this neck why there's two reasons the secondary reason is this actually you're gonna see it could be the primary reason if this mouth is out around or smashed for whatever reason and you seat a bullet into it it's a good chance you're gonna shave that bullet there once your accuracy right off the bat you lost your accuracy that's what I would call the secondary reason but it's a very important reason our primary reason is well we're uniforming our neck tension you say what do you mean okay well you just think about this if I take this case just like this with this the diameter of that mouth as it is from Starline and I load it up and let's say I load X amount of them and I go to the range performance is great I zero my rifle so I shoot all those up with my rifle perfectly zero and then I come back with all of those cases that have been fired so now when we resize this we're going to use the expander out of this die but this expander in this die is your expander. That's not necessarily what Starline may have expanded this to. Because just like all chambers, not all expanders are created the same. So what if we did this right now? We set this die up and we run that expander through our neck. And this neck matches that. So therefore, when we seat our bullet into this case that neck tension will be the same this time as when we shoot it and we come back and we resize it back through the same die and the same expander remember you're going to be firing these many times and we want this to be as exact to the original time you reloaded it as you did every time does that make sense so we're going to expand the mouth of this case but this is what you do not want to do now listen very carefully All right. I want you to imagine I've got a balloon when we blow the balloon up it increases to the outside diameter in all dimensions it's not like this balloon grows this way and then this way and this way and then this way it increases in all diameters when this case is fired in the chamber it's going to be just like a balloon it's going to expand to all outer diameter and that's called obturation it's going to obturate, it's going to grow to all outer diameters. So when we resize this back, we're going to size it back to all outer diameters. But how a resized die works, it tends to begin squeezing this way just before it squeezes this way. So that logically would tell us that if we set this die up wrong to where we are sizing the neck but we're getting just a little bit of squeeze here 
it's going to bulge this body out just enough to where it won't chamber in your case gauge. You with me? Now, let's talk about the case gauge. All right. The case gauge is essentially a SAMI minimum chamber. It's the perfect chamber. It is the standard in which, um, let's call it the standard of perfection. How's that? So you can understand that. So these cases that are set to a new SAMI uh, spec, they're going to fit in this case gauge. Now, we're just looking at this side of the case gauge. Later on, we'll get into this side. But on the side where you see this head, we have an upper step and a lower step. There's five thousandths difference between the upper step and the lower step. The case head will rest somewhere between this upper step and the lower step, but closer to the lower. You see that? Now, what you want to do, get yourself a straight edge or a knife like this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Take a, the flat edge of your knife and you should be able to run it over the upper step of the case cage. And that case head should not impede the knife whatsoever. So now our goal is to set this die up in a way that after we run that case through our case cage, we have this. Alright? So with that, now what we're going to do put this one back in the packaging and we're going to get set up. Alright, so I'm going to remove this dipper for a moment and I'm going to grab this uh, shell holder by Lee. Now, Lee makes this really easy because you always want to match the brand of shell holder to the brand of dice. That's rule of thumb. If you were taking a written test and that question was answered, asked, your answer would be the shell holder should always match the brand of dice. Okay? This is our RAM. You're going to take the shell holder, slip it into position like that. If you're left-handed, you're going to face this mouth of the shell holder somewhere around 830 to 9, or wherever is comfortable for you. Now, you see this handle? We can adjust the height of it down. Lee's done a good job. So, if you are um, left-handed and you want to switch this handle for left-handed operation, and you want to change the height, click on the link on the upper right hand corner of the video right now. I have full setup and adjustment of this press, okay? If you are right handed like me, you'll take the shell holder, you'll position it. Now guys, when I said, okay, I'm looking in my camcorder, the mouth of the case, if you are left handed, you want to position somewhere around, uh, say, 330 or 4. How's that, okay? I think you get it. So, alright. For uh, being right-handed, I now have the mouth faced somewhere around 8.30 or 9. So, it's comfortable ergonomically for you to place the case into the shell holder. Now we're going to take our die. Uh, I love the Lee dies. And uh, we're going to run the shell holder all the way up to top dead center. And now, take your lock ring, run it up to the uppermost portions of the threads, and the Lee lock ring, by far, my favorite lock ring, by far, okay? We're going to start threading this into our, our breech lock bushing. And you're going to run this down until you just touch that shell holder and no more. Once you are touching that shell holder, you're going to take this die and just picking a point on it, turn it about a quarter inch. Now, very important, once you have it, get this lock ring tight. And I'm telling you, there's any one thing I've always liked about my lease. I don't get this. Why guys say they hate the Lee lock ring. Can I ask you a question? Was that hard? That die will stay. It will stay. So, this is what we've done. What this die does is it sizes the outside diameter of the case and the neck. But by threading that back by a quarter, we've relieved the die body 
to where it shouldn't make contact with the body of the dot of, of the case but will still will still run the expander ball through the mouth and that will uniform it so next time when we run this case we get the same expander ball through the mouth of the, the, the die every time so now it's going to go something like this we're going to put our, our, um, our case into position we're going to run it up now you don't have to have the uh, uh, decapper in position because there's no there's no primers but you can leave it if you want but go slow want to make sure the decapper is going to uh, clear that flash hole now go all the way down now this is what we want to do at this point we're going to take this case we're going to place it into here we're going to take that straight edge of our knife or whatever you're using and we want clearance now just don't let this be your gauge really pay attention making sure that the head is still closer to the lower step than the upper step but it's still slightly above that lower step that's the perfection you want okay so now that we've done that this is what we're gonna do this is uh, especially important if you're running uh, previously fired cases of different head stamps don't just start um, just running them one right after another you want to take a you know, when we're talking once fired or previously fired cases we're talking you're totally resizing these back but until you get your feet on the ground you're going to take that knife you're going to run it over that case gauge and you're going to verify that every one of these cases are exactly where they need to be what you don't want to do is you don't want to do a whole batch and then run them all through this and see that a few were, were off you want to catch it now all right now this is a, a neat little press um, I've ran quite a bit off of this already and it's more than adequate for the job it's, it's great um, this right here has gotten more reloaders into the game of reloading than any other press on the market I'm telling you and the nice thing about this press is if you decide you want to upgrade and I would highly recommend the Lee Classic cast without a doubt this is still an ideal press for doing other operations um, universal decapping you can always uh, use it for another load session of another caliber if you're loading um, two calibers within a week you have this all set up and organized on one bench with everything there and you can have another one so this is a great um, beginner and actually it's really affordable if you need another press it, it, it's great so there we go so I've checked those first five and now all I'm going to do is sit here and uniform the necks of all these cases. So now while I do this, I want you to think about something. For anybody that's still vague on why I'm doing this, right now the diameter of these, the mouths of these cases are set to this expander. So now I'm going to run these through the reload process. And when I seat the bullet, there's a particular tension coming off these cases now that will hold that bullet into place. So once I go to the range, I spin these and bring them back. Isn't it going to be a fact that these cases then will go through the same expander that they went through just before I shot them the first time? That way. If they're primo loads and you're happy with the shot groups, you can zero the rifle. And then when you come back and load these, you'll load them. You're ready. All you do is you go out and check zero, and you always check zero. 
you always check zero. You're just not going to go out there and start, you know, <clears throat> busting caps as they would say. You're gonna you're gonna check zero. It's a very nice press if you uh, get this. It's nice because you can take this handle and put it uh, wherever you want it. When you have it higher like this, it's a bit of a longer stroke. If you're a person and you don't have the length in your arms, you can adjust it to where this ball is a little further down, and it's a it's a shorter stroke. Um, now that's how I have the. Um, my uh, Lee Classic cast set up. I have it for a short stroke because I do a lot of uh, universal capping. I, I love that thing. It's uh, bull stout and so with the shorter stroke um, less work on my arm and I can I can put a lot out in a short time. It's very precise. Well it's the same with this. Um, this little uh, 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 breech lock challenger you could drop this uh, wooden ball down to uh, whatever uh, height you want and uh, now it's going to be less work for you so there we go and it works great so far I've done uh, quite a few um, than most of my pistol calibers on this I've done some uh, what we're doing here uh, and I love it um, I even ran some uh, .30-06 messing around with it and uh, this uh, this this breech lock it's, it's got the leverage to do the job. So now when we get done, let's uh, let's take this last one. This last one, so we know that we've done a good job. Right there, we're good. So, in uh, summing this up, now we have uniformed all the mouths of these cases, so we know. That when we seat the bullets in those, they're perfectly round. We have a perfectly round .224 diameter bullet going into, I'm going to say these are about uh, .0222, .0223 right in there. Just enough that the mouth of these cases are slightly smaller in diameter than our bullet that it's going to be just snug going in. And when we, when we do this every time with the same expander, Every time you see into those, it's going to be pretty close to the same. You got it? Now, one last thing I want to tell you. I'm talking about neck tension. And you have to understand this. Um, neck tension on a completed cartridge uh, actually changes over time. In other words, if, if, you, uh, if you load these up and uh, you get to do thousands of these and you have it zero to your rifle, uh, the neck tension will lessen on these over time. How much? Not enough that it's going to affect a kill zone shot on an animal, but enough that you would want to re-verify zero maybe the next hunting season, but what did we say? Every time you go out you're going to re-verify zero anyway, but you just need to know that. It's good knowledge and uh, you could have these sitting for 70 years and a good neck tension and we'll put a good crimp you'll see the uh, leaf factory crimp these will always be good to go so we've done a, a really good job now as far as the graphite being in this we don't need to do anything because when we charge the case with uh, our powder powder has graphite and it's not a problem so we would have had powder in the mouth of that neck anyway or in the, and outside of the neck anyway you got me so there we go so all right so uh, guys and gals, that's the end of this video. God bless. We'll see you on the next.